Hey everyone, Jacob here with another daily vlog. Uh, first, there have been a few people who are concerned with the long hair and with the bearded look that, uh, that I've seemed to have grown. And don't worry, that will be uh, gotten rid of soon as I go back uh, speaking. I just wanted to see how long I could let my hair and my beard get while I was working on the book. And unfortunately, this is as much beard as I can get. It's not gonna get any furrier than this. I really wanted to get one of those uh, big beards so that I could have that uh, intellectual thinking pose. Unfortunately, this is all I can get after, I don't know, a month and a half. But don't worry, the hair will be normal soon, the beard will be gone, and I will look like my normal self. But I digress. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about an article, I've been trending on LinkedIn, and I think in a couple other places as well, and I think it was written by, uh, by Wired, and it was talking about how a lot of the Silicon Valley companies that offer all these amazing perks and things for their employees have basically ruined corporate culture, because now everybody else is trying to do it. And I think that is the silliest thing that I've ever heard. So there are a couple things that people forget, and I have been saying this for many, many years, stop trying to freaking be like Google. So what few people understand is that the organizations that have been doing this, organizations like Google that give food and snacks and all that sort of stuff, these companies have very robust people analytics and data science uh, platforms and programs in place. So when they make changes to their organization, whether it's giving employees food, whether it is changing the way that they uh, train their leaders, whether it's a workspace uh, design change, they have data to back this up. So I'll give you an example of one of the things that Google did based on data. They wanted to get their employees to eat healthy snacks. And uh, they had a hard time trying to figure out how do we get our employees to eat healthy snacks here at Google. So they ran experiments in their different, uh, their different cafeterias and kitchens. And, you know, first they put posters on all the cafeterias saying, you know, this is how much sugar you consume if you drink a Coke a day. And, you know, that didn't deter anybody. Then they got rid of all of the unhealthy foods and employees were like, yeah, no, I want my candy and my soda and my jelly beans, bring all that stuff back. So they got upset. And then what Google did is they took all the unhealthy snacks and they put them in translucent containers that you couldn't see through and they put them below eye level. And they took all the healthy snacks and they put them in transparent containers that you could see through and they put them at eye level. And that got a lot of the employees there to start to consume the healthier snacks. Now that just goes to show how Google views the programs that they have in place. And a lot of the other companies out there like Facebook, et cetera, uh, Airbnb, they do the same thing. So when other companies are just trying to copy Google, it might not work for them. And then all of a sudden we get this like, oh, everybody's gotta have a ping pong table and everybody's gotta have free food. Not correct. Google and a lot of these other organizations who are leading the way in this area do it because they have data because they have science, because they've done research on this to show the impact that it has on employee engagement, their overall experience, their productivity, their performance, etc. Now, if another organization just does this because Google did it, it doesn't mean they're gonna get the same results. It doesn't mean employees are gonna be more engaged. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that you're copying Google. And this is why I always tell people, stop trying to freaking be like Google. Uh, you have to do what works for you. I know a lot of organizations out there who uh, don't have these types of perks and benefits, yet they're still considered amazing places to work. Uh, F5 Networks was an organization uh, not too long ago. I think they still even have cubicles in their spaces and it's rated as one of the, the best places to work. So you have to do what makes sense for you. So that's first of all. Second of all, um, the obsession with the perks and the benefits and the free food and the slides and blah, 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 you name it. We have to remember that these things, um, perks are not a strategy. Perks are kind of an extra benefit. They are a bonus that goes on top. Again, what a lot of people fail to understand is that Google has invested tremendous, and I'm just using Google here to refer to kind of like all tech companies that this article was referencing. Uh, so Google, and when I say Google again, I mean all of these like tech companies that, that we're starting to emulate and copy. These organizations don't just have snacks and perks for their employees. 
These organizations have amazing diversity and inclusion, and inclusion programs. They have amazing training programs, learning and development programs, growth coaching, uh, growth coaching and mentoring programs. They do a lot of things for their employees. It's not as if you show up to a company like Google, everyone treats you like hell, and then you get free food and it's like, oh yeah, I guess it's kind of worth it. So these other organizations that are trying to copy the Googles, they don't change their core workplace practices. They still have leaders who take credit for their employees' work. They still have you know, a flexible work program, but you're stigmatized if you take advantage of it because you know, employees are gonna view, or your leaders are gonna view you as being lazy. These organizations still have uh, outdated technologies. These organizations, you know, th the core of what makes these companies tick has not changed, but because they see Google offering free food and all these great perks, they now do it too. So I think the argument that this article makes that tech companies have ruined um, culture for business, you see that hummingbird back there? Okay, anyway, I digress. Uh, so I think the argument that this article is making that tech companies like Google have ruined corporate culture is completely false. It doesn't make any sense, if anything. These organizations are helping create a better corporate culture because companies are starting to change. They're starting to understand that you can treat employees like human beings and not make them show up nine to five. Now, um, the other argument that this article made is that, you know, it used to be that you could just work nine to five and now employees feel like they always have to be connected all the time. Well, as I again have said, just because you are connected doesn't mean you always need to be available. And it's true, work-life balance is being replaced by work-life integration. I mean, today or yesterday, for example, you take your, I had to take my kid to the dentist. We pick her up early a little bit. We took her to the beach um, just because we wanted a little bit of a break from work. So yeah, it's about being able to live your life and have the work aspect of that play into it. So if you feel sick, if you feel exhausted or burned out, why shouldn't you be able to work from home if you don't have any meetings in the office? Uh, if you do need to take some time off to go to a kid's soccer game, why shouldn't you able to be able to do that? And if you wanna make up that extra time in the evening or if you wanna make up that extra time if you need to on a Saturday, why shouldn't you be able to do that? You're a freaking grown up. you're an adult. Um, but at the same time, the problem isn't that these programs exist. The problem is that when leaders set expectations that you always need to be available. Uh, look at Jason Fried, who runs um, uh, the base camp. You know, they have a policy, you only work 40 hours a week. Anything after 40 hours a week, we want you to shut it off. During the summertime, you only work four days a week instead of five. So there's no reason why you can't have these great programs and policies in place but still have the culture of saying, we don't want you to get burned out. We don't want you to overwork. I've interviewed a lot of CEOs, Barbara Humpton, the CEO of Siemens in the USA. She gets seven, hours, seven to eight hours of sleep every night. So don't blame the, the tech companies in the Bay Area. Don't blame the, the things that they're doing for why corporate cultures are bad. Um, I think every organization is different. I think you should stop trying to be like Google. I think you should invest in data analytics and people science. And I think that if your employees are working 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week, that's not Google's problem, that's your culture's problem. And you need to talk to your leaders and get that stuff fixed. So that's my little rant today. Uh, curious to hear what you guys think, but come on. Let's not blame the, the tech companies out there. I think we can all agree that a lot of the changes that we're starting to see are positive, not negative. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Maybe you disagree. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and in the meantime, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day wherever in the world you are, and I'll talk to you very soon.